So, if you have uh, an n by n matrix, then how many linearly independent eigenvectors does this matrix have? So, not always. If the size of this matrix is n by n, then uh, it has at the most n linearly independent eigenvectors. It may uh, have less uh, eigenvectors. So, the eigenvectors associated with this matrix span a space. Eigenvectors associated with this matrix span a space. And if these eigenvectors span Rn, if the eigenvectors associated with this matrix A, they span uh, this space Rn, then these eigenvectors form a basis for Rn. You know, Rn, uh, the basis for a space is not unique. This Rn can have multiple bases. So, if eigenvectors, this matrix has n linear, linearly independent eigenvectors, then these eigenvectors will span a space, uh, that is this space, and then these bases, this basis is called eigenbasis, eigenbasis. So, what is eigenbasis? Basis of eigenvectors corresponding to this matrix. So, under what condition it will form a basis for Rn? Under what conditions these will form a basis for Rn? When these, there will be n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, let us elaborate this point uh, with the help of uh, examples. So, now all of you know how to find eigenvalues and eigenvectors corresponding to this matrix. Eigenvalues can be computed from this characteristic determinant A minus lambda I determinant uh, from this determinant you find the eigenvalues. The eigenvalues corresponding to this matrix these come out to be equal to and corresponding to these eigenvalues how do you determine the eigenvectors? Eigenvectors are basically the non-trivial solution to this system of equation A minus lambda I into X that is equal to 0. So, uh, how do you solve this system of equations? Construct the augmented matrix, reduce it into echelon form, perform best substitution and then you find the eigenvectors. So, corresponding to one eigenvalue you will have an eigenvector and corresponding to second eigenvalue you will have another eigenvector. So, these two eigenvectors uh, are, these are two eigenvectors corresponding to this matrix. So, these vectors, eigenvectors span R2. Therefore, this is a basis for R2. This is a basis for R2. Basis for R2 is not unique. This is also a basis for R2 and this basis is called eigenbasis, eigenbasis corresponding to this matrix for R2. So, the question is if we have uh, an n by n matrix, so how many linearly independent eigenvectors do we have? So, if the matrix has distinct eigenvalues, then it will have n eigenvectors. Otherwise, it may or may not have n linearly independent eigenvectors. So, let us uh, write this statement that is uh, stated over here. Uh, so, if a matrix A which is n by n, it has n distinct eigenvalues, then uh, there will be n linearly independent eigenvectors and these eigenvectors will span Rn and then these vector, this uh, basis is called eigenbasis. Clear? The one example is over here. This was a 2 by 2 matrix. It had two distinct eigenvalues and corresponding to these two distinct eigenvalues, we had two linearly independent eigenvectors. 
these two linearly independent vectors, eigenvectors, span this space R2, and therefore this basis is called eigenbasis. So if the matrix has n distinct eigenvalues, then it will have an eigenbasis. What if it does not have n distinct eigenvalues? In that case, it may or may not have an eigenbasis. Uh, we give some examples. So we have a matrix, again, its eigenvalues can be easily determined, so it does not have distinct eigenvalues. It does not have distinct eigenvalues. Uh, we, corresponding to these eigenvalues, we can determine eigenvectors. If we construct the augmented matrix A minus lambda i, uh, corresponding to lambda equal to zero, so we have this uh, augmented matrix. Right hand side is 0 and here we have A minus lambda i, lambda is equal to 0. And uh, this is now already in echelon form. So what do we get? x2 equal to 0 and then what is eigenvector? What is uh, x1? x1 can be any uh, real number. So x uh, is for example 0, 1 we have only one eigenvector. So, uh, does this vector span uh, R2? No, it does not span R2. Therefore, uh, this matrix does not have an eigenbasis. This matrix does not have an eigenbasis. Uh, now, next uh, example, uh, we have this matrix, uh, 3 by 3 matrix. Uh, corresponding to this matrix, all of you know how you, uh, to determine the eigenvalues. Eigenvalues are the solution to characteristic equation. Characteristic equation can be obtained by characteristic determinant, which is uh, given by this expression. So I need not to perform intermediate steps. So this uh, equation comes out to be equal to minus lambda cube minus lambda square plus 21 lambda plus 45 that is equal to 0 so this has three roots so one root is equal to lambda equal to 5 and uh, there is a double root uh, at this uh, lambda equal to minus e. I think uh, we have already talked about finding the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this matrix so corresponding to each eigenvalue, for example, lambda equal to 5, you will solve this equation. Corresponding to this eigenvalue, we have this eigenvector. Similarly, corresponding to the second eigenvalue, uh, you determine eigenvectors. Here are the eigenvectors. So what is the space spanned by these eigenvectors? R3. There are three linearly independent eigenvectors. These eigenvectors span this space R3. Th these three eigenvectors span a space R3. Therefore, this basis, this basis is called eigenbasis, right? So the question is, if, uh, for example, uh, corresponding to this matrix, we had only two eigenvectors. So are these eigenvectors, if we had two eigenvectors, do these eigenvectors span R3? No. So it is not a basis for R3. So if we had only two eigenvectors, these do not span R3. So this will not form a basis for R3. Therefore, that will not be an eigenbasis. So Eigenbasis, concept of eigenbasis is clear. Corresponding to, an I, uh, corresponding to an n by n matrix, if you have n linearly independent eigenvectors, these n linearly independent eigenvectors will span Rn, and those eigenvectors form a basis for Rn, which is called eigenbasis. So uh, the question is, so if we have n distinct eigenvalues, then we shall definitely have an eigenbasis. 
then we shall definitely have n linearly independent eigenvectors. However, if the eigenvalues are not distinct, then what is the case? Then we may or may not have eigenbases. In this particular case, we did not have distinct eigenvalues, still we were able to find eigenbases. In previous example, uh, there were not distinct eigenvalues uh, and we were not able to find the eigenbases. So, if n distinct eigenvalues, we shall definitely have eigenbases. If not, then we may or may not have eigenbases. What is advantage of this eigenbases? What is advantage of this uh, eigenbases? So, there are multiple advantages. One advantage, if there exists eigenbases, then multiplication of a vector by a matrix becomes quite easy. How? Uh, if you have uh, this, uh, uh, these are the eigenvectors uh, which, be, uh, which span Rn, then any vector in Rn can be obtained by linear combination of these vectors, these eigenvectors. If these, this is an eigenbasis, uh, eigenbasis for Rn, then any vector in Rn can be obtained by linear combination of these vectors. That is, uh, if we have a vector x uh, which belongs to this space Rn, then it can be obtained by linear combination of these vectors. That is C1, x1 plus C2, X2 plus Cn, Xn. C1, C2 up to Cn, these are any uh, scalars and Xn, uh, X1, X2, Xn, these are eigenvectors which form the eigenbasis for Rn. So, if this is the case, then multiplication of this uh, vector by this matrix uh, that can be easily performed. Uh, when we say easily performed, maybe for hand calculations it is difficult, but for computer algorithms since it will involve less number of multiplication, so it will be easier. So, how? So, the, you can see that uh, A multiplied by X is equal to A multiplied by this uh, site which is equal to C A X 1. Now, A multiplied by X 1, what is that? X 1 is an eigenvector. So, A multiplied by X 1 is lambda 1 into X 1. C 1 lambda 1 X 1. Here, C 1 lambda 1, these are scalars. Likewise, C 2 lambda 2 and C n lambda n, these are scalars. So, multiplication of a matrix uh, is simply converted into multiplication uh, by uh, some scalars. So, for hand calculations, it may seem difficult, but since it involves less number of multiplication, so it is con convenient for computer algorithms. Another advantage of this eigenbasis is diagonalization. If a matrix has eigen Basis, then it can be diagonalized. Uh, so, before we study diagonalization, we study what is the advantage that we shall get from diagonalization of a matrix. Uh, 